All right, this has been a very requested video. So here it is. This is part one of the medical application process. I'm gonna give you guys a few tips about your personal statement firstly, then a few tips about the UCAT and about how to use your UCAT score effectively to pick out the best unis. And then in part two, we'll talk about the stuff after you've submitted your application. So mainly considering the interviews and how you can deal with them. But for this video, we're gonna start off by talking a bit about the personal statement. Now, I know that at this stage, if you are applying for medicine, you're probably going to have already finished your personal statement or be on the very last draft of your personal statement because it's nearly the deadline. And by now you probably have done the UCAT as well or you're about to very soon. So I'm going to start off by talking about the personal statement a bit. I'm not going to talk too much about how to write it just because it's a personal statement. It's about how you write it. But I will give you guys a few tips in terms of what I know about how different medical schools look at different areas of your application. So with the personal statement, in medicine, your personal statement isn't that important. Now, now that being said, I do not want you to neglect this area. I still want you to put everything into it because sometimes the difference between you getting the offer and not getting the offer might be because of your personal statement. Now one thing that I'm going to say, and I'm probably going to say quite a bit in this video, is to check the requirements of every university. Try and really see what they usually focus on and what they take into consideration when they're using your application. So for example, I go to UCL, I'm a UCL first year and I've already had two days of uni now and it's been fun. I'll talk a lot more about that in a different video. But in terms of the way they did their application, what UCL do, so back when I applied last year, they had BMAT, right now it's UCAT. They don't look at the personal statement at all. They only look at it in your interview. They use it in one of your stations. They let you know that they use it in one of your stations. And for me, what they did is they pulled out my personal statement, they highlighted an area of it, and that's where they asked me a few questions about it, and that was the station. So some unis use your personal statement for their interviews. I know Cambridge did that for me as well. Other universities use your personal statement very slightly, and they just have it as a consideration on top of all the other aspects into your application and then some universities in fact a lot of medical scores they don't even look at your personal statement so check the requirements of your uni you'll probably have an idea of what they look at in that that's hopefully just to reassure you in case you are very worried about your personal statement trust me when it comes to med school and applying for medical universities the actual personal statement doesn't have as much of a weight to it as it would in other courses just because with medicine you've got your interviews you've got your UCAT so there's other things that are going to take into consideration whether or not you're actually going to get the offer. Now, in terms of the personal statement, I'm going to give you guys a few things that you should have done in your personal statement. And if you haven't, then I guess this can be like a nudge in the right direction so you can do a few corrections and whatever. The most important thing when you're writing your personal statement for medicine is to ensure that it shows that you can be a good doctor. What does that mean? What does it mean to be a good doctor? By now, you should know the qualities of a doctor. You should know that a doctor is empathetic, a good leader, a doctor can work good in a team, right? Specifically in what type of team? An MDT, that like different aspects when you're working in, for example, in like a surgical setting, what all the different types of healthcare professionals that are there and how they work together. That's a very common interview question. And it's a question I got asked myself as well. So talking about that is really useful. And that's also a really good way to bring in your work experience if you have any. But the important piece of advice that I wanna give you is that less is more. You really don't don't want to put too much into your personal statement you just want to expand on a few things right each paragraph should only have a few things and you just want to expand on them as much as you can and really show how whatever you did led to you becoming a better doctor right or led to you becoming better suited for the role of a doctor when you're writing your personal statement always write in a reflective sense so for example you did a certain activity you read a certain book you did X, Y, Z, and then you reflect on it and you say that you've learned X, Y, Z skills. And then you can talk about how those skills are important in a medical setting and how they're gonna help you become a good doctor. You really do not want to be waffling in this because you don't have the space to. You know by now that there is not actually much you can write for this personal statement before the character count takes up. So you're really trying to be concise with it and you really don't wanna be saying stuff like, I've always wanted to do medicine since I was young or I read this certain book and it made me passionate for medicine. That it just doesn't mean anything and anyone can say that. What you wanna say is stuff like, this taught me empathy and how to communicate with patients effectively the more personal it is to you, the better it's going to be. It's not got a certain formula or a certain way that you're meant to write it. You're just trying to make it personal to you and that will genuinely be the reason that it becomes a good personal statement. I have had a few people ask me what kind of things have I put in my personal statement, like exactly what have I done. So I'm just reading through some of this. One thing I've done is I've been a first aid cadet for St. John's Ambulance. That has been really useful. So that just allowed me to go to first aid events, interact with actual patients and be able to deliver very basic 
basic first aid but even that it taught me a lot of skills I did get asked about this in my UCL interview as well I'll talk about the interviews in more detail in my second part anything you write in your personal statement even if it's just a line or so but make sure you're able to expand on it right so what I actually did for mine is I printed out my personal statement and I highlighted any areas that they could potentially ask more questions about and I wrote a response for it in case they did ask me in an interview now I'll talk more about this again in my interview side but for now let's just continue working through this personal statement so I said that I did first aid and I talked about how that helped me work in a team right work efficiently in a team right and it's also taught me about empathy and communication so written here as well that it made me learn to prioritize the patient's needs and value their right to autonomy so I'm basically just trying to say every single thing that a doctor's good at and everything that a doctor values I'm just trying to put it all in there and then talked about a few other events that I went to I went to some conference and like seminars and things like that. I talked about a few of those but I tried to make sure that I kept it very concise and I didn't talk too much about different ones and I just stuck to the same one I made sure I continued developing that one if that makes sense. So I've read, one of the books I've read is Do No Harm. You guys might have probably read that as well or you guys have probably heard of it. I talked a bit about that as well and I linked that to the idea of delivering bad news and then I linked delivering bad news and that aspect of medicine to an online course that I did. So one entire paragraph was just stuff that you could very easily do to be honest. I talked a lot about palliative care and quality of life and things like that. Then I also talked about um, a research project that I did back in year 12. It wasn't an EPQ because I know a lot of people have done that. This was just like a research project that the school just allowed us to do. My one was about Alzheimer's and I talked about how to treat Alzheimer's because there isn't really any proper treatments but there are things coming out to help people live with Alzheimer's and make their life a bit more easy and make it safer for them to just live their own lives in a happy way and to not let them lose their quality of life if that makes sense. I talked a lot about this in my UCL interview because there were two stations where I got to bring this in. So I do really recommend having some sort of area of medicine that you've really like looked into and you research a bit about because if they do ask you to talk more about it, at least you have that expertise and at least you have that knowledge to talk about it. That's the personal statement side of things. I hope that's given you a bit more of an idea in what the personal statement's really about and what you're trying to do from it. My biggest advice is always to make sure that it shows that you're being a good doctor, right? It shows that you have the qualities of a doctor. If you don't know what those qualities are, NHS values is a good place to start as well, right? Look at the different NHS values, what the NHS themselves value, and then try to bring that into your personal statement or into your interviews. Now, that's the personal statement side of things. Let's move on to the UCAT. So for you guys, you only have this UCAT exam. I think maybe Oxbridge are going to do their own exam later on. They're probably going to create their own one. But right now, you just have the UCAT. Unlike me and unlike the previous years, you didn't have two exams to do. You just had the UCAT. And the good thing about the UCAT is that once you've done the UCAT, you can now use that knowledge to decide which unis you want to pick. Whereas with the BMAT, the BMAT result came after you already submitted your application. So if you did badly and you picked a lot of BMAT universities, you're kind of screwed. That's the one good thing about the UCAT. That's literally the one good thing about the UCAT. Everything else about it is horror. I hate that exam. I don't think there's anyone who actually likes it because it's just luck. It genuinely is just luck. Every person I've talked to has said the same thing. It's just a game of luck and a game of just aptitude. You just have to be good at it. You can get good with like the shortcuts and whatever and to try and make things as efficient as possible, but you can never really improve in this. You can, but it's like, I don't no, I hope you guys understand what I'm saying. It's very difficult to, at least for my experience it was. But wherever you've gotten, you probably have a score now and you probably have a few universities in mind that you want to apply to. So what you want to do, pick a list of like 10 universities that you are planning on applying to and you're trying to pick four out of those 10 universities. And the most important thing is to look at the thresholds at which people get interviews and people get acceptances with the UCAT score that you have, okay? So for example, if you have a UCAT score of 2,500, don't apply to Bristol, for example. Bristol is notorious for having a really high cutoff from what I've heard is that you need that you need to have like a really really good UCAT score in order to have a chance of getting the offer. If you don't know which unis have higher cutoff scores than others, you can search this online. It's really easy to see the average scores at which people get in. I wanted to apply to KCL myself, right? But when I got my score of 2,880, I think it was, or 20, something like that, I was very hesitant in applying to KCL. Potentially might have gotten the place, but I didn't want to risk it just because the KCL cutoff was like near 3,000, I think it was. I can't remember exactly, but it was slightly more than my 
um, score itself. So using that knowledge, I stayed away from KCL. I decided not to apply for KCL and I decided to go for two BMAT and two UK universities. And so obviously your predicted grades, you have to factor that in as well, look at their requirements and whatever. But after that, use your UCAT score to determine, okay, there might be a chance I get into this uni with this UCAT score. If I'm lucky, I'll put that as my first option. Okay, because that's the uni I really want to go to, for example. And then you can put two more universities that you think will get you the place or at least will get you the interview with the score that you have, right? put those universities in and then put a one that has a much lower threshold than your UCAT score just so as a safety that's there for you in case everything else flops. So it really is a case of looking at what the universities are looking for. One reason I applied for Exeter University was that Exeter is known for not only factoring in your UCAT when deciding whether or not you're going to get the place but it also factors in your predicted grades quite a bit. So for that knowledge I decided maybe on the safer side Exeter might get me a place so I applied for Exeter as well because of that reason and because I did kind of like the uni as well when I explored a bit about it. So my advice, plan strategically. You can get your offers, you just need to make sure you apply for the right unis. So if you didn't do very well in your UCAT, that's not even that bad. I'm going to link a few resources down below in terms of some things that you can use to work out what unis you should apply to based on your UCAT score. Now one thing I cannot give you advice on, and some people have asked me this as well, is whether or not they can apply to previous BMAT unis with their UCAT score. Like for example, some people have asked me, I've got so and so UCAT score, can I apply for UCL? Do you think I'm going to get the place? I didn't do UCAT for UCL, I did BMAT, and no one really knows what the cutoffs are going to be with UCAT. That's going to be quite difficult for you guys, and that's going to be a bit of a gamble. So, that for the first year, for you guys, I'm <laughs> genuinely sorry because I don't know how that's going to work out. You're just going to have to make sure that you do have your safeties in place in case it does go wrong. Stay ambitious, right? If there are some unis you want to apply to, make sure you do apply for them, but just always have those safeties there as well. Do you know the fifth option? I don't really think that matters too much. Much. I mean apply for some biomed or like some non-medical related course if you want to. I personally would have probably just taken the gap year if I didn't get my medicine but it really depends on who you are and what you want to do and if you don't mind going for biomed in case the medical offers don't go through that's something you just have to figure out on your own. Let's focus on trying to get those med offers so we don't have to go to that stage. So yeah as a bit of a review we talked about the personal statement and we talked about the UCAT and deciding where to apply. So with the personal statement I said keep it concise Make sure that you only talk about how what you're doing, right, the experience that you're doing, the books you're reading, everything like that, how it's leading you to become a good doctor, to embody the qualities of a good doctor. And then we talked about how you can use your UCAT score to get a good idea of which universities will probably accept you for an interview and which won't. And so using that score effectively and strategically to pick unis that will be in your best interest and will most likely offer you the place. Because at the end of the day, the good thing about medicine is that no matter which uni you do in, you're doing medicine the same way. Even though the style of teaching might be different, so you might be doing some clinical stuff earlier than other unis, you're still going to be doing the same medicine and you're still going to come out the same doctor. So you don't need to really focus too much on which uni you're going to. But that's one good thing about medicine. It's very regulated and it's very standardized across the different unis that do medicine. And yeah, that is it for part one. It's been a late video as well. I was planning on uploading this much earlier, but I hope it helps in some sort of way and I hope it makes you more confident with this application process now that you're submitting your UK application. It's crazy how it's time for this already. I still remember when I did mine a year ago. But yeah, I hope it helps. I'm going to be releasing a part two of this video where I talk about my interviews. I'll talk about exactly what helped me in terms of my interviews. Obviously, the Cambridge one didn't go so well, but the other ones, I think I've got a bit of an idea of what you can do for them. So I'll give you guys a few tips on that. If you guys want that, let me know down below. I hope this video helped and I'll see you guys very, very soon. I need to head to uni very soon as well. So bye for now. And I hope that the application process goes smoothly. It's going to be very rare for it to go smoothly just because it's medicine you're applying for medicine you're applying for one of the toughest courses so genuinely just getting to the stage you've done so much you're nearly there now it's just a case of waiting and preparing for interviews so good luck best of luck on this journey it's going to be a long journey you're still not done but trust me it's going to go by very fast and you're going to be done before you know it and yeah i've been yapping way too much so bye for now see you and i hope we'll see you again very soon bye